阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。So good evening, everyone. Um, we'll start our practice one on one session on treaties and response and retributions. Um, we'll continue from last week. This is what we talk about last week uh, about the horrors of war and how we should be more merciful. Uh, if we are unfortunate in that position, um, and the importance of sages uh, is to open up our eyes and open up our horizons. Basically, they are teachers, and uh, otherwise we're stuck in ignorance. And the consequences of ignorance is uh, making mistakes without knowing it, suffering from the consequences, thinking that someone else is to blame. But the fact is, we are our own. How、uh, to say? Driver of our own destiny, and the only us, only ourselves, can fix our own destiny. All that the all teachers can do is give you a lot of good、um, conditions to help you, but you are the one who has to decide whether you want to change or not. And that's why it's important to have sages to give you this kind of understanding. Otherwise, we would,、uh, you know, humans, we we prone to blame others, and you know the the culture of you know. Blaming others is quite、um, strong,、uh, and it's very、uh, unhealthy for your own development and also development of you know the communities and societies. So to do this kind of thing is to you know it's like poking your eyes and make yourself blind. That's a foolish、uh, endeavor and should not be pursued. Now we'll go to the week this week's because last week we forgot about this phrase and.、Um, We like we like、uh, last fortnight. Sorry, we forgot about this phrase. We would like to add to it.、Um, so in the youth group, I have already started that, and here I'm just going to be、uh, more of a reflection.、Uh, if I have something to add to it, so first half of the sentence goes by to abuse and exploit widows and orphans.、Uh, that's that's it for the first part. Uh, abuse and exploit widows and orphans, and we understand that people who were widowed or children who were orphaned were in very、uh, how to say in deep grief and deep、uh, need of care and love and you know if anything understanding、uh, from the society from the friends and families. To do the opposite of that is to、um, how to say. Is to go against our better nature. Is to go, you know, to lower ourselves,、uh, to lower our,、um, to cover up our conscience and、uh, follow our desires or our、um, more primitive side of human nature.、Uh, because we,、um, in terms of widow, for men or women, we lust after them. This might happen. Exploit, you know, take care,、uh, take their vulnerabilities as our. Uh, initiative to you know、uh, either you know seduce or either or you know make use of their grief and、uh, scam them you know with money. I think you guys have heard of a lot of romantic scams and all that. That's also part of a exploit. You know, people who were losing their、uh, partners or something, they might you know in deep need of love or something, and you know some people might. Chip in in that kind of vulnerabilities, you、uh, and you know use scam, you know trying to get money out of them, stuff like that. So this is、uh, one example, which is very com,、uh, very recent example, how we exploit widows, and often as well, like you know sometimes often might be adopted to the families, you know,、um, and you know because they don't have their own parents with them, they.、Um, Don't feel safe, insecure, and you know this can be remedied if they were adopted into a loving family, caring family, and they were you know understood the situation and talked through 
or they were in that you know communities that are just uh, you know uh, giving that space for this orphanage kids in the orphanage to grow healthily you know they have, can have brotherhood sisterhood um, it's it's also the same yeah it, those things can be remedied and to do the opposite of that you know instead of giving them a safe space and giving them the, uh, the protection they need to grow healthily we abuse them in all forms mental psychological is going against uh, like I say our better nature is to be an animal or worse than animal um, why would people do that you know why would this happen you know some people uh, abused means that you know what gives rise to that mind of abusing someone first thing you have to understand that this comes from a place where you are in a high authority like I say authority doesn't necessarily mean a government title or incorporate or anything it can be just in a position of caring taking care of other people so you are in charge of their well-being or giving that condition and to go against that duty and abused means that first the person is already unhealthy inside it's unbalanced inside full of prejudice bias or they carry out whatever negative emotions unable to process it pass it on to the young ones or pass it on to the vulnerable ones so that is a sign of immaturity and sign of weakness true weakness and and people who do that sometimes in household because out of sight out of mind they can do that in the dark no one can see and uh, you know, sexual abuse uh, I have to bring out in the open this happens in the news and the reason is they cannot co cope their own uh, how to say their own desires and you know let it run a vow so it become worse than the beast so this physical abuse as well you know getting drunk just abusing kids or abusing uh, be it male or female it can be both ways you know I do not support the notion of one side both can be abused emotionally or physically all this is because twisted uh, I say unable to process emotions properly healthily uh, and the consequences of course is the uh, you know law itself is a very straightforward shunned by society is another one you know um, like when you when you have this kind of like a pedophile or something that happens in the jail there's always a saying even the worst of the criminals like murderers or anything where they hear you are pedophile they will give you a really good t beating in the jail so this is kind of like human equivalent of hell in that even the worst of the like uh, thief robber murderer when they saw you a pedophile they will give you a very good lesson in that that you will never forget that means that still there is a standard in society that you know we should be taking care of these people who are already greatly disadvantaged in all form financially emotionally and should not abuse them if anything it will be shunned by the society it will be uh, apprehended by the law but that is not in, that is not it the um, karma um, of that is it might happen to your own children to your own partners I think that's worse than death right like having someone you like or having someone you uh, your own family being treated like that is worst so the only uh, the thing we can get out of this is when people are in charge, in power, in position of you know, authority or in, in any forms, they should always think about this thing will not last forever. Uh, one day you will be vulnerable. And what happens, uh, what comes around goes around. If you take care of people, uh, no matter how hard it is, no matter how unreasonable the other person is, that's only for that one moment. And if you really you know, do things out of your uh, kind heart because this is the right thing doesn't matter they take it or not because this is the right thing to do and you do it because it's right because it's fulfill uh, it's it's in our better nature our buddha nature then rest assured you will be taken care of in times of needs whether through actual people or through invisible ways you know they will just be you will be you'll be in the right place in the right time and these are not coincidence those are all very how to say you read what you sow it's very logical um, you know uh, so 
when you empower, always think of how can I do, how can I contribute, how can I give, right? Because you can give more. And when you stepping down, you enjoy the fruits of your labor. You know, if you build up something good, something uh, non toxic. Uh, in the communities in whatever space you're in even though you're no longer in that space that you help building in the in, in the new stage in your life once you retire or step down from the position or you know the role reverse you know the child becomes the carer you become the one who's being taken care of rest assured you'll be t- you'll be taken care well right um, so these are very straightforward you know nothing uh, nothing to talk uh, like this is something you can just see in your life immediately, all right? And let alone the one that goes beyond now, you know, your your next life. That one is definitely um, you can extrapolate. You can extend from the logics from now, and then you extend to the future, project it. So the second half of it is explore uh, is you know going against. Uh, this word chi fa so hui means people who are supposed to f- for, uh, f- supposed to be um, doing their job as the um, you know judge the uh, police p- police officer the enforcers prosecutors doing their job to uphold the uh, you know society's laws and order go uh, has uh, in a sense corrupted uh, um, going against their you know oath uh, and their duties uh, by perverting the cause of justice misuse misapply the application of the law this begs one question why why would people do that and you know the straightforward answer one of the straightforward answer would be you know there is self interest in it when people have self interest in something they were in charge supposed to be in charge to be um remain objective impartial there obviously this will happen you know you cannot have self-interest in the job that you're doing in a sense that you know if if especially when you're in in, in this legal system and stuff like that it has to be um clear-cut it has to be uh as impartial as human could be as impartial as possible uh, as uh, as careful as possible um, because uh, going against this duty that you you know you're in charge you're given this much power you know by constitution or whatever by the people um, by the society to you know take care of this uh, you know many cases you know you get paid well as well people in this field of work are paid well as well and that resource came from the society came from the peep tax and your job is to uh, smooth out and to um, process this kind of um, you know um, societal uh, issues. That's why you have judge, you have court, you know, to 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 settle disputes and all that. And if we go against the 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 mandate that we were given, you know, the power that we were given and the resources that we were given, and abuse it for our own gains, obviously, you know, nothing comes cheap. Uh, nothing comes free. I have a quote I would like to share. The cheapest thing is the most expensive thing. Let it sink in. Why? Because if you can do that in that position of power and you use the resources of, say, in US, there are how many? 27 million people? Uh, in Australia, it's 26 million. Right? Using Australia as an example because I'm in Australia. 26 million people and you... Um, perverted the cause of justice for your own gain using the funds you have effectively created 26 million creditor that you have to pay back I think comes cheap guys like this cause and effect is very fair it's, it's just because your life is very short in or you you cannot see what beyond doesn't mean it doesn't the, the, the debt will incur the accounting book does not stop it has to be balanced it doesn't matter when you know, we have financial years because I work in bank. Financial year, like that. We have also financial life. Think of that in that spectrum. It's very logical. So, if we abuse that, if we don't understand this perspective, don't understand the consequences, 
what happens is you may get away because you're in power and in charge. But remember, power does not always stay with you. Uh, when when it's time, you know the paper cannot cover fire. It's a Chinese saying of you cannot cover up a secret. Uh, and eventually we'll come out to see the light, and you will be punished by the society, by the you know by the society means by the law, and karmically you will also need to pay back the money you stole with interest. So those things are not fun. All right. Um, if you can accept this level of understanding, then you can look at. Well, it's not so much nowadays. You can look at in ancient times. Why are donkeys and horses work so hard for so little? Like, why were they born in that family and they work like hell? Like, especially they they toy. They have to toy themselves to to get through their days. All right. That, that's a that's a reason why certain animal is this, you know, and why are you know lambs being slaughtered when they were born, All right? I'm not talking about ethical. I'm talking about cold hard realities of that thing happening right now. Yes, as well. Even we don't use horses as much anymore. Think about the people. Some people has to work ten times the other people just to get the same salary. Or some people have to work so damn hard just to get hundred dollars per for per day. Uh, some people can just sit there and one million dollars just came into their account. It's not coincidence, guys. It's not because you know you can use whatever analysis we use. But if you only see this life, this is very short-sighted, very childish. I might say. So. It, that's why sages is important. They give us the insight. They are not just thinking it imaginary, la la land. They observe it. It's just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. They can see it, all right. And they will show you based on their character. They don't lie, right? So back to the point. Same goes for this one. You know, if we can't understand that nothing is free in this world, everything will be paid. All debt must be paid. Blood must be paid with blood. Doesn't matter how compassionate Bodhisattva is, if you are not awakened to this fact, blood debt will be paid with blood. All right, financial debt will be paid with finance. All right, the debt of uh, gratitude will also need to be paid. Obviously, we don't need to think in a transactional way, but this is just how it works. You know, when you receive, you need to give. When you give, you will receive. All right. Um, and and the scale and all that depends on um, uh, how awakened you are. People who are non attached to this action, they will give without thinking. When will I receive? You know, well, you know, when's my return? They don't think on that. They just give because it's it's part of their you know practice cultivation, and they broaden their mind. And rest assured, they know that they will receive anyway, even though they don't want it. They didn't ask for it, all right? Because this is just like gravity. When you go inside the law of gravity, when you jump, you will fall. Definitely, you don't need to think about when will I fall. It will fall. So does the law of give and take, all right? Karma, and you reap what you sow. This is very straightforward and can be applied every day, uh, from the simplest, most uh, let's say observable. For our in our capacity to the broader spectrum that is beyond our capacity to see, but we still can think about it. Uh, right, these things can be applied in every spectrum. All right. So going back to this one, uh, knowing the law of karma, knowing the law of people, also we also knowing the you know law of debt, paying back the debt. Uh, it's not worth it. It's 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 very expensive. To commit this kind of crime, and understanding that, I, I can, I can get, I can say, no one would dare to do it. There's no point. They would just do their job well. They would just understanding their duty. They would do their best to, you know, help people in need, uh, getting out of legal disputes, or uh, make sure the punishment befits the crime, which is the educational purpose. Punishment must always have educational side of it, not just for the sake of fun. 
if it's for the sake of fun, it becomes statistics. Right? It has to use use it in a way that it invokes um, how to say uh, uh, education, invokes awakening, invokes awareness. The consequences is heavy if I commit this crime. That's the whole point of having punishment. All right? Driving from the lightest, like a driving offenses, give you uh, double demerit or something just to keep you in line, understanding how heavy it is. It's nothing for people who earn million per day or per month, but for everyday people, which is 90%, it's heavy enough. So it's something like that, okay? So back to the uh, point. Uh, so we already have, uh, you know, uh, uh, digest through this phrase. Um, yeah, so, so, you know, use that principle and put it everywhere else. Uh, whatever you do, think about that. Like, you know, like, uh, who who do I want to be? Right, um, we all obviously want to be a better version of who we are now, not just in the character moral way, but also in actual, you know, quality of life way. You want to improve your income. You want to improve uh, your skill. You improve your confidence. Improve your ability to um, how to say perform. All these are very uh, desirables. Uh, uh, how to say, desirable skills, and desirable um, desires uh, for everyone. So, so those things are, uh, how to say, those things can be achieved, and it has to be achieved in the right way. Uh, and and understanding the law of karma helps you to get there. Not just looking at Bill Gates and say, why is he rich? He dropped out from college, uh, and he get one million dollar. Yes. Uh, uh, he get to be one of the richest people in the world. I agree, he did. And a lot of people tend to do that. It's because their condition is, they don't need too much condition to get to that level of wealth. They already have cultivated in the past. Why do I say that? Because scientifically, you don't just take one sample and say this is true, right? You have to take 100 in the sample size. And if everyone drop out from college, will become as rich as Bill Gates, then we can support the fact that if you I drop out of college equals to I will get rich but it's not a lot of people drop out of college either they fail their startups or either they just have to go back to uh, 9 to 5 uh, with a low, lower starting salary that's a reality there's only one or two Bill Gates Warren Buffet or those very super rich people alright how many are they among 7 billion people the sample size is just not sitting right. So this is not a right analysis. Right? The right I think the the more accurate analysis is this thing was people has accumulated in the past. Say he has worked ten times harder than you, every one of us in cultivating the act of giving. Hence he will get ten times more reward with the interest. So all he needs is just a little bit of condition to open up that vote he already has accumulated himself. For us, if we didn't work as hard as he was in the past life, obviously we don't get that much. Understanding that we will never want to take bribe anymore, there's no point. I would rather work hard and accumulate more wealth in my own vote than trying to rob someone else. You can't rob someone else's merits, guys. That thing is invisible. It just transforms in whatever form, like in convenience, in good networking, in, 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 in uh, better convenience than everyone else, say, access to wealth, access to uh, right people, meeting the right people, uh, even partners, you know, meeting the right partners. Why do one person meeting have 10 times, 10, 10, 10 relationships that does not work? And why does some people just met one and sat for 70 years of their life and have a beautiful uh, 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 family, all right? And their grandchildren are very filial and very good cause and effect guys this is the use of cause and effect implication of cause and effect application of cause and effect all right it's not just a concept it's applicable it's usable all right it, very simplest way of saying it you treat me well i treat you well cause and effect all right all right you call uh you you you, you take care of me in, in in my time of need obviously i will repay that debt of gratitude and take care of you in time of need those are first level. Obviously, if you talk about bodhisattva, they can say, despite whatever whatever you do, 
I will still take care of you. All right. That's because that's also because Bodhisattva already seen the past life and understand that you and him or her. There's no gender there. Uh, 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 with the Bodhisattva has has a deep connection, whether it's good or bad. That's they can see different levels. All right. And 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 it invokes even more motivation to do even greater uh, uh, deeds. Uh, so back to that. So understanding that spectrum, understanding that big picture, under, uh, as a tool toolkit in your life, uh, bribe is useless. You know, the suffering that we gone through now. All right, if we gone through it without committing any transgressions, we pay it back. Just like you settle your debt, student debt, home loan, whatever. You settle it, what do you have? You actually own whatever the property you have. Or you're free from debt. <clears throat> you're a free man, free woman. You have more space to operate. If we complain, whine, don't understand why, and then resort to this kind of, I might you know, snitch a little bit of money from the public pockets, then you have to pay even more. You incur more debt on yourself. All right? It might not happen now. It might not happen next life, but it will happen. And when it happens, you better pray that you can take it. If you can't take it, you still have to take it. <laughs> that's the worst part. So th that's why sage is important. It's not just because they are sitting there for you to worship. All right? They don't want your worship. They don't need that. They're full of confidence they can self-sufficient they don't need your they don't need to bait for respect or attention they can just have a beautiful life somewhere else in their their world is bigger than us why would they need your uh, worship or praying they don't they're only here because they compassionate and saw there are people struggling to get out of their loop and they keep committing this the very mistake that caused them to be in debt power of crappy life at the moment so they came down or came to that level trying to tell you how to get out and uh, 9 out of 10 spit on their face and that's why they are called bodhisattvas they move on they continue to do what they need to do and they leave if you don't take it it's fine as long as they talk to you about this kind of this level of understanding, we call it enlightenment, awakening. This is what awakening is, okay? It left imprints in your mind, and now we have a more advanced understanding on size, not so Newtonian, so dead and rigid. We understand that there is something beyond what we can see, many dimensions, neuroscience as well, talks about neural pathways, you know, it gets more, more advanced, less narrow, less rigid, less domatic, all right? Um, then we understand that you know this this um, this this t uh, this thing will help you to get out of the, the 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 habit that traps you in the first place. And people who already achieve that level of you know liberation, they will come back and help because it's it's natural. You know, if you have so much to give, why wouldn't you? If you're in deep content, you have in abundance of people who are content. They have a lot to give. And they they have a lot to give just because, like I say, people who are content does not necessarily mean they're rich. Sri Jen Yishu was not rich; she lives by the public housing in Singapore. And Sri Jen Yishu is one of the ladies. She's like a mother Teresa of Singapore. She basically does not have any savings or anything. She also lives by picking up rubbish and, and cardboard. Yet she take care of tens or twenties or thirties of elderly people who are older than her, I mean, who are younger than her. At the age of 80, she take care of a lot of 60 years old. That's content. That's rich. That's real rich. That's real wealth. All right? That, that's the wealth that you can tap without worrying. All right? Which will relate to the next phrase that, that I can show you. Um, what is right, what is wrong. You know? So, back to here. You know? No, like wealth or all this is just one factor. It's material. You, know, you can only get so much from material. You can have Ferrari, 
you can have thrill of riding a Ferrari on day one to day 100. After passing that day 100, I'm just pointing any random numbers. It's still a Ferrari. And then you need to worry about service and all that. You have to worry about uh, storing it in the nice, uh, secure car park. You have to worry about the services. You have to worry about someone, might someone who does, doesn't like you or who doesn't like rich people might key your car. You might worry about someone else stole it, your stuff. So, who is rich, who is poor, right? right? As long as we got right just enough for us to get by. And then we start doing something beyond just seeking, you know, material comfort, something beyond that. Then you can start to explore. Your world is bigger, basically, not as narrow. Right, last one. Actually, we still have half an hour. So, issue judgment or legal arguments that twist lawful conduct into a crime or to criminalize action they are moral, neutral, or trivial. To issue judgment, and this is one thing, I think this can be said in, in, in one go. To issue judgment, law, legal decision that twist what is unlawful and lawful to lawful and or discriminalizes civil crimes. So, you know, I think I mentioned that last time a bit, but this time I'm, I read into Master Ching Kong's speech and I think his, his way of analyst, uh, explaining is much better, much more rounded. Um, this is giving you, the, uh, 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 using legal to bring you to the point. It's just a vessel to carry you to the point. So why do I say that? First thing is, um, in the context of legal, you know, uh, feel, people who were in charge of you know passing sentences and all that of course we have juries and all that but juries were picking from common uh, populace and they do not necessarily have the law experts in that people who are educated in legals you know in charge of um, passing judgment in charge of influencing the crowd um, uh, framing this in one way or the other in your favor whichever you side defendant or accu um, accused a defendant or the um, prosecutions, prosecutors, um, um, ha has responsibilities to make sure it does not twist the um, what is right and what is wrong, basically, you know. And how do we know what is right and what is wrong? This is a very important question. It decides your whole life, at least. In the very least, it decides how your the outlook of your life how would it look like all right it decides you know um the way you operate the you know the the way you conduct your relationship with other people hence the kind of uh, results that you will receive uh, many forms in relationship socials in in financials in you know in uh in politics uh, sorry in in careers in uh, uh marriage Right. If you cultivate your, if you're practitioners in terms of your merits, you know, um, and if you expand to a society, and if they don't, they don't listen what is right and wrong. What happened is, um, how will the society be, continue to operate? You know, does it get more twisted? Does it get more skewed towards an extreme? We already have few examples of that in the past, in the history of our civilization. In, of, of our common history, World War One, World War Two, you know, uh, which with a heavy cause, heavy consequences, you know. So what is right and what is wrong, right? And and also um, we need to understand the. This is one aspect, right? Obvious one. What is right, wrong? Let's also we need to understand what seems, uh, what makes it so how to say hard to discern is sometimes things are very muddy. You know what seems right that's not necessarily is beneficial in long run. So that means it's not right in that sense. It does not benefit in long run. This was mentioned in Liao Fan. All right. Uh, something like, something seems correct, but if you apply in long run, it's actually harmful. Uh, you know, the analogy of having um, a Taoist monk, a Taoist practitioner who can turn copper into gold and gives to the uh, Mr. Lü, who wants to practice the um, Taoist way of attaining immortality, 
becoming one of the immortals. And he says, uh, what would happen after 500 years? Uh, you know, because the person who turned the, who has the uh, alchemy art of turning copper into gold, tell him that you can use this for 500 years. And then he asks, what happens after 500 years? This gold will become copper. That means I will e effectively, um, how do I say, harm people 500 years later because money, right? They can use it to mortgage or whatever. And if it becomes copper, basically you turn their life upside down and make their life worse. So he doesn't want to do that. It doesn't benefit people in the long run. And because of that thought, you know, he'd think of that without anyone guiding him or telling him. He just think of that. He immediately achieved that level of immortality he likes to achieve. It's just basically a rank of cultivation. All right? Same goes for, you know, wealth, career and anything. If you have that very genuine thought of actually helping people without even thinking about uh, uh, short-term benefits, short-term gain, you're actually trying to do right by the people you're serving. You know, what, whatever you are, you're serving a certain people, customers or elderly or anyone. You know, right? And if you, you do your best, you know, right by them. Doesn't matter what uh, cost to you or whatever, or it takes more time or takes more effort, but you will just want to get it right, get it done properly because you want to make sure they are, you know, taken care of. That kind of thought, I can rest assured that you will be taken care of in your own journey, in your career, towards your wealth, towards your career. You know, the level of uh, your increase depends on the level of genuineness, sincerity at that very split second of a moment when you're faced with that decision. Can I cut corners? Can I not? You know, if I cut corners, I can save a lot and then, and then you know, speed up and, you know, appear high achieving. But if I don't cut corners, I persist because with the very right reason and, you know, at more cost of myself but I still can bear it at the end of the day the job gets done properly people are really impressed and really happy with what you're doing how can they not come back to you to conduct business with you again or how can they not come back to you and uh, you know asking for your service again so these are very simplest way of explaining it what is right and what is wrong what does it do in long run all right. Does it really help in long run or does it just appear shiny, helpful, but in long run it's not? It has consequences you know, that actually harms people. So if we bring back a little bit, you know, all this is about cost benefit, the benefit, you know, but who are benefited by this? Um, you know, if we can think about benefits, the, the, the area of benefit can be as big as the whole universe, can be as small as yourself. All right, and our scope, if we are only focused on ourselves in a way that you know we operate, it's like you know, does it benefit me? Does it not benefit me? Which is the default way of thinking, right? We all still think like that to some degree. All right, we cannot say, no, I'm selfless. I hope you are, and I wish this is why we're cultivating here. But if you're still stuck in six rims, more or less, you're still stuck with that ego. You still have that self, uh, selfish thinking in some degree. You know? And we will peel the onions of this, you know, big issues later as, as we go. Uh, because this concerns what is right and wrong is it has to concern with the the value system and that is very important because that informs what is right and wrong or it tells you the nature of what is right and wrong you know why are they this dichotomy this this thing against each other so if we only think about our own self this little you know if you define self as this body you know 
this material itself. All right. Then there's only so much you can do, right? Because you still age, you still pass away. Uh, what you can do is better food, better clothing. You know, some people might go for surgeries and, and, and perform surgeries and they say, yeah, you know, I want to look good. All right, it's fine. Like, you know, it's your body, right? It's your right to do what you want to do with your body. But why not open up a bit more options? You know, if we just define self in form of material, that would be miserable in a way that you, you are so stuck with this constant agitation. Because why? This, this body is really easy to deteriorate at any moment. You know, walk by the street, a car took a wrong turn at a wrong speed, that's it, voila, sayonara. Uh, bye bye, that's it. Or one cough, there are unsuspecting cough that gets into your respiratory system that happens to be at the right place at the right time and attack the right thing, not right thing, attack the thing that is so uh, your, 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 your respiratory systems like your lungs your lung sac SAC lung sac sac and cause you difficult to breathe and then sayonara goodbye my friend it's suffering it's painful though I'm not saying that it's funny it's, it is funny if you think on the big perspective but obviously if you experiencing this it's terrible isn't it and so, if we define ourselves on material body, it's miserable because we are at the mercy of all these conditions. World, climate change, right? And even this does not happen. You're subject to age, sickness, right? Some people can do it without, other than birth, which they have no choice. Uh, actually, they do, but let's not go too far. Uh, and then um, you know the sickness, the illness, sickness. One thing, uh, uh, age, you know, and death, right? Um, if they can cut off the illness, a lot of things can be. This transition is much better. It's all about transition. It's not saying that I won't get there. It's just how I get there, and you know, when I get there, how painful it is, or how easy easy is this right so if we define just by our material self right well, we worry about mortality oh I would die oh my body oh my face oh my beautiful face oh my beautiful power oh, and then from there you will relate to your wealth your wife your husband your family your possession you get you defi if you define by material self which is this body and you start to cling on to this external stuff Right, and that in that system we call uh, what is right is you know, take good care of your material self as the ultimate right thing to do. And what is the weakness in that point or uh, value system? You are subject to impermanence. One earthquake, like I say, one car crash, one COVID, it's all it takes to shook up your world. Some people can't take it, they jump off the cliff. Some people can't take it, you know, they do a lot. So those things are serious things, like, those are very important. Because having a right starting point or a vantage point will decide how you co combat, not combat, how you manage the shock into your system. And rest assured, the shock will come. COVID has already passed, right? Before that, there's bushfire in Australia. Before that, there's flood. Before that, there's financial crisis before that oh my god it never stops isn't it this decade and last decade when I want one so vantage point is important alright alright it decides half the battle before you actually encounter anything so this system is insufficient I'm not saying it's wrong to take care of yourself I am I should take care of myself you should take care of yourself you should take care of your parents as well and if they're suffering you should take care of their suffering by releasing uh, by by using medications and all that. We already have the system, human system right now, medical and all that, designed for that. All right? That's why science was 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 developed 
to take care of this, to alleviate this, to um, ameliorate, to improve the conditions. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just it's not enough. All right. Despite that, there's still a lot of issues, isn't it? Mental issues, illness, and all that. This cannot be solved by putting your value system focus anchored on material. It has to be bigger than that. It has to be expanded from that, including material. But it has to be deeper because material is just one of the um, phenomena. If you don't go to the root, this is. You're not going to help anything. You're just going to chip the grass at the top. The root's still there. It will still grow back. All right? So, wow. The next level, mental, psych. You know, now we understand this right and wrong from that point of view is insufficient. Now we go deeper. All right? So, how does... I? There's a, there's a saying by Descartes or somewhere, I think, therefore I am. All right? That means... Whoever I think I was, there I am. That's how I define myself. You know, uh, what my mind. This is a bit more sophisticated, a bit more deeper. So in that analysis, we can think about, uh, you know, um, I don't need to worry about my material self. I just need to, you know, conceptualize it properly, think properly, um, and I'll be fine. But the thing is, when is when is our thought ever gonna stay still? It's not. It's gonna it's gonna fluctuate so much, and you're gonna end up same thing as your material self, which is a pain, like even worse actually. I mean, because the mind can fluctuate from one end to another, and you don't know when it will stop. You know, especially when you have nothing to latch on, it gets even worse. It gets like, like like milli split of a milliseconds, a lot of wandering thoughts coming out. Suddenly I'm happy. Suddenly I'm sad. Suddenly I like this guy. Suddenly I hate this guy. Suddenly I love this job. Suddenly I hate this job. Suddenly I fell in love with the woman. I marry her, and then suddenly she become my worst enemy in the world, who nags me every day in the morning. So this kind of thing happens, all right? If we allow, if we if we use mental, uh, how to say the um, whatever I think, therefore I am. This 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 is not solid as well. This is not a foundation we should stand on, because this is very volatile and and and. And when, uh, when is my perspective going to stay in one place? No, it's it's not. All right, uh, it's going to change. You can say, oh, what about stubborn people? They they, you know, they fix a, a certain connotation of themselves. Yeah, but but it's an illusion, isn't it? It's a mask. It's not, it's not real, isn't it? Like, like people, some people are you know fixated on a point of view and they never change from that. All right, and where did that point of view came from? You know, was it well informed, or was it just because they were grown into that system? So the the, the only way they can think is like that. So everything they operate is just like that. That's not that's not consistent as well because all it takes is a person outside to shatter your system, and you already like like you know, oh my god, my whole world was broken. I feel, and then you feel fear, you feel like insecure because you. That's what we call um. People who are stuck in their uh, in their in their uh, system of comfort, suddenly someone else challenges their belief. Either they get defensive and bite back, you know, and they you know obey which hand if they have a group of people who are stuck in the same belief system and and get rigid, too rigid. That is not flexible, you know, and and it gets even more how to say narrow-minded, and so suddenly someone else who are you know more fresh. Minded, challenge that. What happened? They all get burned on a stake. Copernicans, Copernicus talk about helio. This is how it happens, right? Back in medieval times, especially in a place where the belief system are so, also strongly held in one fortress. Suddenly, one person being more creative and challenge it. That person get witch hunt and burn. All right. So this is also another uh, unreliable um, point of view to define what is right and wrong. So where do we go? So first, we need to understand what is not. All right. In Bud- in, in the in the infinite uh, no, in the um, Diamond Sutra, it talks about um, everyone in six realms. They always have ego. 
that point of view comes from that ego or self the I is the, 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 the root cause of all the problem why because the vantage point is already in the wrong place if the vantage point is in the wrong place everything else from there what they can see what they can do has already set so in Diamond Sutra it says the perception of self the perception of others the perception of you know sentient beings and the perception of time or age this four perception uh, all right the root of it is the ego and um, the root of ego is attachment stickiness we call it people who attach like you know uh, attached to a thing they cannot let go all right so with because like like i mentioned about if you attach to material so to, to the body as myself everything that relates to your body your clothes your cars your uh, partners your your uh, materials it becomes much more important suddenly and if you do not allow yourself to be locked by the uh, system that is based on material possession or material body then you relieve yourself of that burden suddenly you don't need to be buying you know 100 Rolex watch and you know just to appear you know cool and all that suddenly you feel it's okay you know just to get enough to look the part for the job and then you move on your life suddenly become lighter and hence and unintended consequences your body actually age slower if you let if you felt less stressful that i think that's quite logical isn't it if you're less stressful you smile all the time how do you smile all the time all right what does people don't smile because they're heavy in their heart what about people heavy in their heart because they have so much thing to worry about and why does people have so much thing to worry about because they have so much things to attach on and i'm not saying that you shouldn't have responsibilities and burdens we should i have suffered the problem of not having responsibility and burdens and ended up being unlatched unlatched that means not reliable and ended up this is another extreme you need to take whatever responsibility and burden at the suitable time when you're adult you need to act like an adult and you know if you need to buy a home you need to be responsible for saving enough money for that those are day-to-day uh, -day stuff but beyond necessities you know of daily life we don't have to burden ourselves unnecessarily that's the importance of what is right and what is wrong all right and that's how six dreams was founded the heavier it is you attach the lower you get the heaviest is in hell because everyone attached to one form one of the in the christian term cardinal desires it can be lust can be um you know, hatred can be uh, endurance, uh, can be uh, gluttony and all that. So, first thing we need to do is to solve the vantage point issue. You know, where do I start with? Where do I see the world? Where do I understand myself and my and the world in relation to myself? Everyone sees from themselves first, and then they relate the world to them. I look at Auntie Yen Zi, I relate to myself you know, in relation to me. All right, and so when I talk about this, I need to relate to you. Like this in relation to you, otherwise, it will just be un not interesting, or it will just be not latching on. All right, this is how it works. So now we understand that this is how it should work. We need to correct our view. All right, um, and once we have a view, we fix on the view. We understand that. We already attached to it. We already lock ourselves in, and that is where problem comes in. Because you're only stuck in one place, you cannot see other side, right? So, if in the ultimate way of saying, what is right and wrong, all right? To be honest, it's because when you're stuck in that wheel, that wheel says this is right. So anything outside that wheel is wrong, all right? But um, it should not be that stubborn and flexible what we instead of the vantage point we should take all right 
is awakening is right non uh, how to say non awakening is wrong what is awakening you know understand um uh these issues understand myself right understand my motivations understand my desires understand my strength understand my weakness is right all right and then what is wrong is blaming everything on the outside pushing every responsibility to the outside is wrong all right so when we start to learn that we understand that um if we take too much were, uh, uh, weight on self-interest just for yourself all right and and only want to benefit yourself whatever you do you know even this one you just want to appear you know you just want to gain fame and all that then it's wrong if you do this to improve your character to so that you can you know work with a wider range of people you know, understand more people through interactions like this or uh, through sharing what you know you just simply want to share so that you might help them even a word even a sentence even a, a quote then it's right so transforming that you know old habit of stucking your point of view in that muddy you know ego and you know awaken from it means that let go what is not necessary take up what is necessary you know um, point of view does not have to be stuck in one place right as long as it's actually helping the progression of the people uh, I don't want to say in a big abstract way if it helps the team and it's not harming people go ahead if it does not help all right no matter what form of way we're doing things it's useless or if I do all these you know nice things or all these machinations just to benefit myself you know like money laundering like you know doing stuff that is you know smart but not right just to benefit myself that's obviously wrong um, or I appear nice trying to you know get uh, um, trying to appear nice just because I want to attract opposite gender sex uh, to be a partner with me that's wrong I want to treat people because you know uh, that's the way I want to be treated that's better you know that's more understandable even better is doesn't matter what other people treat me you know I do not base my vantage point on how other people treat me alright but on how much I can give and the more awakened I am the less attachment I have towards my material self my mental self my mental perception of self alright instead I focus in, in deep cultivation of full enlightenment like full understanding of myself I just want to gain 100% understanding of myself alright that's how we should we are ourselves which one is illusory which one is not illusory which one is something that we can pursue which one is uh illusory that means subject to change right I don't want to rest my whole analysis my whole point of view on something that is volatile my emotions my feeling right my um, body that's most obvious my possession even more obvious from outside to inside right I want to base on something that is eternal uh, unmovable that does not get tainted no matter what happens Right, for the lack of name, or this thing cannot be described by name, we just call it Buddha nature. Some people call it God. Some people call it, you know, uh, Tao, the Tao. Doesn't matter what name it is. Rest on that point of view means that full understanding of inside and full understanding of outside in relation to you. Only then you can operate freely in the world. All right. So. That's why, all right, what is right and what is wrong once we have this perspective. Think of in relation of um, time. Oh, let's not go too much. Um, 
if it fulfills uh, the true nature, our Buddha nature, which is fully enlightened, fully connected to everyone, then it's right. If we're going against that, shutting off ourselves towards the path of enlightenment, that means getting ourselves into more muddy mess, getting ourselves more trapped in our emotions, into our possessions, into our greed, insecurity, hatred, ignorance, then it's wrong. So if the outcome of the things we do brings light to yourself and the world around you, which is your friend, your family, your own universe, and hopefully they go and bring their own universe, which is their own friend, their own family, their own colleagues, their own boss, their own world, into a better, more cooperative, more reconciliatory outcome. Then it's right. And so with that understanding, if we put it in day-to-day -day stuff, the way we deal with people, the way we speak with people, all right, then we understand that, you know, right now is the time where you can change. You don't need to wait for the result because this thing already put in action. All right. You understand there's no, no need to stuck in a sense of self. That means, you know, time, you know, my past, my present, my future. When is your past? Now is the past. When you say now, it's already a past. All right. And that future that you think of and when it actually happens, it's not the exact same thing, isn't it? So we rely on that analysis, it's not going to be useful. Obviously, we can still do projecting and all that, measurements and all that. Those because it's very... There's a, I like one of the monk that says that, very powerful words. It depends on where you want to, how far you want to go in your life. If you want to go just enough, you don't want to go like full enlightenment, full awakening means full understanding, full connection with yourself and your world around you, then you can just settle by looking at the rough picture and that's it. And, and you can stuck in that flow. Okay, there's past, chunk, there's present, there's future. And then there's you and me. Uh, there's, everything is fixed, very rigid. All right? But if you want to break through the mode, if you want to move beyond, all right, the, the set norm, all right, then you have to understand deeply. Like I just like I say, when I say now is already past, that now becomes, all right. When I say future, I keep thinking that future. But when so-called future actually arrives, it's not exactly the same. So when I say cause and effect as well, you know, what you do now, you will have to suffer later. You don't suffer later. And I really like how Master Shingo said. Later is because this, how does it get to that later? Think about it. Because we're talking about right and wrong, this is very deep stuff, right? Later, right, if you say, um, give you analysis, procrastination, my uni homework, I'll do it later, all right? So I imagine my future. I will be doing my third assignment that's gonna do tomorrow, 12, uh, 12 uh, it's 11 p.m., all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wake up in the morning, have a nice cup of coffee, sit down, and actually being a nice, uh, good student and write my assignment. And the reality, this is tested 100%. None of this work, not even once. The imagined future becomes, how do I say, unravels as it actually arrives next morning, wake up. What it does? I, might, I drink coffee because I like coffee. And then start playing game. And then listen to the lecture, feeling like, okay, this is good. And then when I actually supposed to do that, things come. My friend carries me like tells me to go out have food with them or I just sit down and procrastinate look at my YouTube or or if I'm at home play games non-stop after I play two hours of game I'm thinking another hour I will do it and then the another hour becomes 
I keep playing the games. And that hour that I'm supposed to sit down and study becomes half an hour. And half an hour becomes 15 minutes. 15 minutes becomes T minus one minute. And on that time of deadline, I'm still not able to do finish my assignment. So what I happen right now is crisis mode. Go into scavenging, like how many marks deducted. Back then, I think now they like they just fail you straight away or something. Back then, they were very lenient. They like minus one mark per hour, minus two mark per hour. So now I I mean that cost benefit analysis. Oh, I'm gonna lose three marks. And so after the deadline, one week after deadline, only then I'm able to submit. 90% of the work. That's the reality. So, tell me, what is right and what is wrong? And tell me, like, cause and effect, how that works. It works right now. If I say now, I want to do this, alright, and you commit to it, no matter what happened, you commit to the right cost, immediately you already create the effect of getting things done on time. So my cost is I commit my time. I don't care what happens. I sit down and actually do it. One word, two words, become three words, become five words, become 10 words. The cause and effect is happening. Every sing- in terms of assignment, every single word is happening. All right? It's, 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 it materializes. And, and as I commit, when I reach that time of, uh, you know, full stop, your time is up, then I submit. And that's the effect. So cause and effect happens at the same time. So what is right and what is wrong depends on this moment. What are you doing at this moment? Don't think of past. Don't think of past. Don't think of future. Right now, what are you going to do? What is, what is your action, thought, speech right now? That becomes more powerful, irrelevant. It won't be like my analogy of my own weakness and failure. Oh, one month later, two months later, all right? Something you can do now, you do it. Something you really can't do now, yes, you can set it in future. But when that day comes, you commit to it, all right? Having the habits, it can be applied to name four as well. If I'm saying 15 minutes chanting, no one can touch it. If that 15 minute becomes half an hour, half an hour becomes one hour, one hour becomes two hour, two hour becomes four, four becomes eight, eight becomes 12. How can your vow not be strong? The problem is how many people actually commit to that and how many people can maintain this awakening. It's tiring in the beginning because it's, you know, it's very, you know, you have to struggle. You know, like, when do I relax? When do I, of course you need to relax. When you relax, you actually want to relax. If you, if you relax, you actually don't overthinking stuff. You actually at the state of peace that's called relax but a lot of time we relax we overthink it we start doing stuff and then and then this becomes the cause of another effect so it's not complicated it's complicated when I say it, articulated but it is happening already right now in front of you in yourself outside yourself and so once we settle down understand this then when we look at this phrase again you know, people who twist what is right into wrong and put what is wrong into right, it's because they were stuck in a certain point of view. And actually, that's still okay. To be honest, why would people want to twist the narrative? All right? Their value system comes from selfishness. So it's all because of selfishness. Number one, in terms of legal system, the previous phrase already mentioned, corruption. Accepting bribes. Uh, Master Ching Kong also explained very well. Why do people swap around what is right and wrong in relation to the society common good? First thing is corruption, you know, financial benefit, or cover up your back, cover up your downsides, trying to protect uh, you from legal repercussions. So you go against your conscience. Number two, Bias, prejudiced, bias towards, bias against, you know, that means you have prejudice. That means you can't think 
clearly. You're stuck in that feeling, you know, of like or dislike. And then you base your judgment on that. Number three, it has to do with ignorance, which means negligence. Um, people who like to ride the wave, like to get things done quickly, but not carefully. So something that is as serious, that affects people's livelihood, affects people's, maybe a policy, doesn't have to be you know criminal, policy, judgments, they pass it down quickly just to get political points, score points, you know, and not thinking about the actual constituents they were in charge taking care of. You know, how do I answer to the whole constituents that elected me? Or people who doesn't elect me, but I'm in the office, in the power to influence their life. So I need to think about that. If they use that kind of mindset, they will be very careful. Or if they think their own loved ones, their own children, their own wife, their own husband, their own parents were affected at the receiving end of their policy, of the decision, it's very easy. Immediately we're like, oh, I need to be careful. It will influence my child's life. Who doesn't want that the best for their child? So yes, so what is right and what is wrong is very important. If you can, how to say, not just thinking on that narrow um, selfishness and you know relate to people who re- who who really um, matters. You know the people who were affected by your policy, then affected by your decision, then you will make the right choice. You will be careful. You will not be moved by bribery. You know if someone bribes you and say, "Hey, just you know, let it go." You know, like you're a building inspector. You say. You saw you you detected this building is under, you know, in violation to the building code. Asbestos was included in the building material that caused cancer, that will potentially cause harmful uh, chemicals to be inhaled by the inhabitants. Okay, and and because of that, um, it's in violation. And then this structure is not sound. It might subject to you know, danger in the event of earthquake, like in San Francisco or something. Okay, and you're a building inspector. People bribe you two billion dollars into your account. I have money from Bahamas. I'm just gonna give you that two million tomorrow if you happen to sign that certification of you know building is fulfilling the pin uh, the building code of whatever the state that is. You will have two million dollars. Of course, we want two million dollars. A lot of people have been working their whole life. Why? Because they want to get enough money to have comfort. The problem is, what is the consequences of this two million dollars? Immediately, you must relate. What if my mom is in there? What if my son is in there? What if my son is in that building, inhaling harmful asbestos every day? Why is my son in there? In the event of an earthquake, it will put a full stop to a lot of people. Sometimes people don't think that because they too hell bent on these benefits, blinded by it, you know. So, so this is this is something we can use to exercise on, and immediately choice is clear. No, go to jail with like and because you want to bribe me, another one for you. That's how it should be done. It's some the right thing is very straightforward and simple. It's just that too much selfishness in, involved that caused this. So just yeah. So we need to be very careful of our thoughts. And then when we use when we look at this phrase, we can think about hearsay, rumors. You know, rumors is the most powerful thing. Right? It doesn't have to be right. Just Putting it out there, give me that vagueness, assumption of some some of it might be right is enough to shake the whole organization. From marriage, shake a marriage, to shake an entire country. Or world. You know, world leaders submit. You can spread some rumor. Germany has sent some uh, you know, spies into uh, Russia 
uh, or US have spread some uh, CIA agents in uh, embassy of China or China has done something in that even though it might not be 100% true even though they might just doing whatever's in the jurisdiction and they might also see the possibilities of doing another thing that's enough to break any sort of negotiation that might potentially save a lot of life because they don't go on on, on a war or on a proxy war or something <sighs> so yeah that's why vantage point is important if your vantage point and your benefit your interest your interest lies in one point obviously you will be affected when your interest is shaken right I still have the problem with that we all have that the only way one can achieve unshakable immovable devotion in the sense of you know real selfishness selflessness is when they understand that they do not attach self to whatever outside influence to wealth to promotions to 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 the benefits you know even to in relation to their own family that's even harder but the legendary people who are able to you know distance themselves from their self-interest and do the right thing even though it costs them their, themselves because their family is cost age and only then you will not be moved by outside that means you found your true self you understand yourself very well congratulations you might die in this life but you know the, 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 the reward is much more because you pay the ultimate price in our way in our sense you know you pay with your life or pay with important things your family or anything but you accomplish so many things for many people you know you maybe save the world or save the world or actually effectively uh, help the whole uh, group the people in charge of safe and sound you sacrifice your own family yourself to save hundreds of family thousands of family obviously your family will go to the right place and you will go to the right place better place than now because all that must be paid it goes the other way people owe you a lot of debt of gratitude they will have to pay you as well not in a painful way in a they happily give you a, you know whatever you need it might not happen now it will happen in next life you become emperor that's what emperor was made you become king of whatever and whatever you want everyone was respectfully lovingly giving to you that's the karma obviously in pure land we don't even need that alright we, we, we understand that these are natural we can just do it uh, without any problem that takes even more broader sense of understanding so I will leave it here because this thing cannot be finished in few sessions and my experience with this is still very rough um, I'm still trying to learn this so I hope that I can bring a little bit of window I'm just trying to translate what Master Chikung is saying or internalizing it and trying to share with you guys as well that's what I'm doing right now okay Bodhisattva is immovable because they understand they don't put themselves in relation to material, in relation to their feelings, emotion, the mechanism, in relation to false perception or view, a certain view, whatever view. Even the Buddhist, the, the label Buddhist, they don't put themselves in that as well. They just use that term Buddhist just to give you a flag so that you can move away from these obvious attachments into lighter attachments. Once you reach that level, you need to let go of the flag too, so that you can move to the actual destination. You can't just hug the flag and say, like, you, you can't just hug the, 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 the New York road sign and say, I'm in New York. No, you're still not. You're, 500, uh, you're, 50 kilometer, you're 5 kilometers away. That's what the road sign says. You can't just hug the road sign and say, I'm in New York. You have to let go of the road sign and go to the New York. That's when you're in New York and enjoy the city life so does buddhism they give you the flag telling you come here come here you don't hug the flag 
you go towards the flag no matter what happened go to the flag and then when you reach the flag the flag points you to the direction you have to let go of the flag and go there right so that's how it works so observe ponder because we are thinking anymore we can't not think if you want to think think with think productively so that you can actually use something useful in your life all right uh, learn from Bodhisattva learn from Buddha they have so many examples and Bodhisattva and Buddha does not have to be in the form that we familiar with it can be in the form of Mother Teresa it can be in the form of if you understand the principle of course you need to learn the sutra and all that using that principle to understand the world and yourself is the value of Buddha Dharma Sangha a value of Dharma value of this talk all right not Dylan say it's what does that value the lesson that we have shared values what does that mean to you and how do you use it to enlarge your life only then you will feel the joy and then you will share you become the same person you will share it to other people around you okay so what is right is to unlock your enlightenment and, and uh, to follow your true nature you know to fully understand yourself to understand the whole world around you and then to act according to the full realization if in the absence of that full realization you're able to be empathized understand where they come from despite they are wrong they still have to suffer the consequences but you're able to get past the emotion you will have emotion you acknowledge you have emotion but you get past it you understand where they come from and able to achieve the peace you act what you need to act in your capacity for the common good as per the law but also in the deep emotional intelligence level you're able to understand where they come from why it makes them commit this crime hideous crimes and then you add peace you not feel hatred even though you have to pass the sentence the punishment or whatever right that is right what is wrong a lot of this it's uh Taizan Gang Yimpian this sutras now uh, this yeah this is a sutra sutra saying is your behavior is not in accordance to your better self yeah, right? even though you have power you act reckless in self-interest in a, in a very selfish way reckless way in a way that is um, biased in your emotions so that is wrong so that's the summary okay thank you so much it's not easy Andy I know but um, yeah I'm glad we have this talk hopefully we can have a few few to read out and next session will make it even more condensed but this is a um, very hard way to say it um, yeah so selflessness is right right think of selflessness as in you don't attach yourself to the false sense of self you understand yourself thoroughly that's how you become selfless I'm telling you the mechanism of it and what is wrong is you attach your false sense of self either to material possession which is what bribes how bribes happen to you know emotions to you know a, a fixed view of a certain thing that means preconceived notion or bias prejudice or spur of emotion those things are not real they're not permanent that's why Buddha said impermanence in relation to these things okay in Chinese 常乐我静, 苦空无常, 无我. these two are these two is how we should analyze it 常乐我静是什么? all right I'm just saying what we say in English and Chinese because we've been hearing Master Ching Kong so many times. Alright. Which 
，就是说你要能不动，你才可以转外面。你一动了，外面就会转你。All right. So what is right? 什么是是？什么是非？什么是直？什么是曲？就从这边开始想。啊，如果没有知识之力在里面的话，曲就是曲，直就是直，就这么简单。It is what it is. You can see it as it is, because you don't taint that will with your bias, with your feeling, emotions. You acknowledge them, you understand them, you you feel them, you get a rush of them, but you don't allow them to take away your agency, your control, your clarity. That's how clarity is powerful. It's not saying that you don't feel anything. That's called that person, or that's called a wood, mu mu tao ren. It's not, right? You feel it, you understand it, but you do not get swayed by it because you are in control. That's a practice that we need to attain. How do we practice it? Right? From everyday life, when we observe people, things, from the smallest things like, ah, it's cold, and then a knowledge is cold. You feel it's cold. Your knowledge is cold, and you let go. Obviously, you take care of yourself. You know, wear more clothes. But if it's not there, move on. Don't say, "Oh, very cold," and then, yeah, don't don't give in to that. That's how you take back control slowly. Ah,、uh, um, that person. Uh, how to say? Uh, that person is rude. Do the same thing as well. Don't don't take in their, their their words. Understand their root. Understand it's not right. Understand you feel unease, unhappy. Let it go, like a passerby, pedestrian. Observe, and then if you have that affinity that with that person, that person you have to work with every day, then start turning around the thinking, from unease to understanding. Why is that person? So much hatred or so much anger that pass on to me, to other people, he must have a lot in his mind. That becomes compassion. Even you can't do that at the moment because you hate, you hate, you hate, you have such an intense feeling. You don't need to take all in, right? Don't take. You just need to. You just need to. Stay, if you can't take a space. And then analyze it. So let's talk about it next time. Always leave the good bits, right? For next one, right? We'll end this session now. <laughs> Thank you, Auntie. <laughs> Dedication of merits. Or let's do ten times Ami Tofo. Ami Tofo. Ami Tofo. Ami Tofo. Ami. To for a me 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 to for. May the merits and virtues accrue from this work. Adorn the Buddha's pure land. Repay the four kinds of kindnesses above, and relieve the suffering of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this aspire by their enlightened mind and vow to be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitofo. I also dedicate merits to my grandfather and hope he will recover well, and、uh, from his illness. If not, then pass in. The most painless and peaceful way, so he may be born in better realm, if not pure land. And also dedicate merits to Master Ching Kong, who has this、uh, passed few months ago.、Uh, may he return、uh, to the, may he compassionately、uh, return to teach us back in the Saha world, so that we may all meet together again in the land of ultimate bliss. And may all the practitioners of four. The, the 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 all practitioners of the path、uh, from Buddhahood to all the good path, may they all、uh, achieve、uh, full enlightenment、uh, ultimately in the end.、Uh, and in current life, be free from worries, pain, sufferings, and be able to enjoy the Dharma、uh, 
benefits uh, in their very present moment until the very end of the journey. Namo Amitofo. Thank you. We'll, for two more weeks, we'll, we'll go through this uh, change on Wednesday because I'm trying to uh, bring a few of them to the um, session that are more suitable to them. I also learn from this English Buddhist session, sharing, um, get better. So you know, I'm just trying to learn from them as well. No, uh, it's just the people I bring is already here. It's our own youth group, some of it. I'm just trying to, because they English only. So the environment we have is um, it's very good. We have Chinese, but we don't have enough going into the English. So I'm trying to bring them to a different environment, which I happen to have. I didn't find it myself. People introduce it to me um, and say that, you know, uh, this is the English uh, Damat class. I find it very helpful. Why not have a try? So I went there and I was like, this is quite good. They're talking about things that are actually in accordance to the sutra. Obviously, not in Final Life Sutra, but Buddha has a lot of sutra. And so those are like, you know, Jiang Ying Guo, Jiang Dao De, Jiang Zi Bei, talk about meta, loving kindness, talking about the, uh, maybe not cause and effect yet. Some people can't take that past, present, future, but uh, they go in there, you know. So I'm very happy. Uh, at least these are introductory course to Buddhism. Um, and, and this is how Buddha teach. He started with what is right and what is wrong in a more simpler way. You know, don't, if, you're, if, you're, if you're children, you don't disobey your parents. You don't do cause trouble. That's right. If you follow your parents' teachings, follow your teacher's teachings, do your duty at home is right. You know, What is wrong is you cause trouble, you, you bully people, it's wrong. Stuff, stuff like that basics and they are doing that they're trying to explain it in English and and that's very good I think this is something we need as well in our society in our uh, association because um, that's why Lao Hesang tell us to do this Tai San Gai Yin Pian Di Gui because we follow the Chinese tradition but whatever tradition it has to talk about cause and effect which is what we're doing now it has to talk about you know what is Disagree. What is right? What is wrong in your behavior, your conduct? You cannot leave that foundation. So yeah. Okay. Okay. That's why. That is why. That's why. Ultimate real understanding is what you put it into is coming back to you because other people is also reflecting you, many part of you. So it's it's how Buddha operate. I think I don't know, but they don't see themselves as me. They don't see you as you. They don't see you as a separate person. That's how they do it. Otherwise, how right? Because right now we operate on this. It's very hard. We always have that separation. We always have that, you know, all kind of complications. But Buddha does not operate like that. He's like you. It's just like me. It's just you have a different condition that makes this form. But we're all coming from the same source. Ultimately, you have to come back. Right? Even more closer way to say is a mother waiting for a child to come home. No, even better. You, yeah, yeah, that's easier to understand. But it's even more intimate and close than that. You are him. And that takes time to realize because we are all stuck in that mindset. This is why I'm trying to say loosen up, relax. This is something I learned as a lot as well. I need to learn as well. Mm. And ultimately, Niem for is the reason why Niem for keep saying Amitofo in the mind is trying to understand you are Amitofo. It's just right now you're not attaining that realization. So, yeah. So it takes time. Um, those are materials in supporting you towards that realization. So, yeah, we have to work hard on it, auntie. Yeah. We're doing the work now. We're spreading the word. We're trying to have the session and you listen to Master Shao to whoever Master has affinity to you who are working on the right path. Gives you the right vantage point. We can't release, we can't be as, you know, broad as Buddha, but at least we need to stand on the right place first and eventually broaden it. That's how we should work. Not stuck in that 
corner and you know grind endlessly money 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 or worry this worry that at the end of the day at the last breath of your life still doing the same thing that's even worse isn't it it's going nowhere but you and I are not doing that we don't want that we want to liberate first ourselves and also people around us how do we liberate first our mind the neural pathway we use a scientific term now has to be reset how do we reset it every day you know this kind of conversation this your life experience my life experience uh, after I gone through it I like I hate I dislike I like and then I learn and I process and get better next time I don't want to repeat that cycle you know you will always be tested Lao Tzu Sang say if you pass the test that everything is smooth if you fail the test you have to start again I mean you have to take the test again until you pass it the more you pass in this life that means the more you can take it and able to process it and be at peace in the end the better you are in the end in the, in the end uh, so okay tell you all right I'm going to for what I'm Good night. Bye-bye. Uh,